morning. As we uh, move on into our minutes, I mean, uh, sermon part of our service this morning, I truly want to thank the Lord this morning for us. Um, the, the Sunday school has Sunday school Bible study, as we call it, has really been a, a true blessing. I, I'm really thinking about recording um, that. Also, it is uh, changing how we do things, and when you come unto Christ, that should be the the main focus of coming unto Christ is to change from the way that we currently are until the way that he wants us to be. This morning, I am going to be uh, preaching, teaching, talking about repent, and then I put ant, repentance. Um, there is not one of us that don't need to repent uh, in our lives about things that we have done against God. And my scripture that I'm really going to start off with, um, just so that we all understand that we all have problems that need to be fixed, that we that only the person that can fix them excuse me, is the Lord. We can go to Romans, the third chapter, and the 23rd verse. And in it, it says, for we all have sinned, not some of us, not just a select few of us, but it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So we all have sinned and we all fall short of God's glory. So if you don't feel that you have sinned or are sinning, um, the Bible gives us a completely different story. I want to uh, run over to Psalms real quick. Psalms 51. Yeah, I got several verses, scriptures. I want to kind of get some out, not say out of the way, but I got to get through some of them before I can get where I'm going. Psalm 51. The fifth verse. And it says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So no matter how you think you feel about yourself, you were born in sin. You were shaped in sin. So even if you don't feel like you were sinning, that's the way you are just from birth alone. So none of us, this is why I wanted to capture that, none of us has uh, excluded a sinful nature in, in our lives. And that's the purpose and the reason why we need to repent. Now, there are some things that have been going on that is a reason for the call for repentance. I, myself, think about my own life. And in my life, I think about how I was living in the world, how I thought in the world, how my focus was in the world, the things that I wanted, the things that I wanted to do, the, the way I wanted people to view me was all worldly. I, I was not happy unless I could achieve my goal of being someone great in the world. If you knew me a lot personable, personal, you would realize what a clown I am. I am truly uh, a jokester, uh, all in fun. I am also pretty intelligent, not bragging on myself or anything because a lot of folks don't know me that well. And so I try to tell people there are things that I, God has blessed me to be able to do, and I do give God all the credit for it because I know without him, I would be nothing. But I felt a need for a change in my life. Back in 1990. Two was when the change started occurring. And I felt God pricking at my heart and um, pulling me away from my sinful life that I was lead, living to go more towards a more spiritual existence. Uh, you probably heard it if you followed us on our relationship uh, series that we were doing on one dating. That's one of, one of the reasons how Pastor A and myself end up hooking up. But in 
our life, and I'm talking about all of us, including myself, in our lives, what we look at, what we do or don't do is also considered a sin. If you are a Christian, but you refuse to speak out on the wrongs of things that's been done or to take a stand on which way you want to go with it one way or the other, that's called a sin of omission. If you go to uh, James, the fourth chapter, the 17th verse, You would see what the Bible says. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fail to do it for him, it is a sin. That's a sin of omission. When you don't take a stand or do what is right. Now, I'm going to go back a little bit. I, I can start with today, but I want to go back a little bit. When there were crimes committed, and because a person may not have liked another person, whether it be because of skin color, who their family members are, or whatever the case may be, instead of standing up for what is right, they decided to go ahead and let them perish or be punished for something that they didn't do. That's a sin. See, it doesn't matter how they continue living their life. That's a sin. Now, for sins, we got to do what? We have to repent to God so God can forgive us for our sins. When you offend a person, the Bible says we do what? We have to go to that person and ask for forgiveness. Now, for some of the people that have passed away because of your omission of a sin, it's going to be a little bit difficult. But you have to learn about repentance. Another one, commission, Romans 7.14 to 20. Romans 7, and we're going from verse 14 to 20. And in it, it says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. For I do not understand my own action, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. See, when we are not strong in God's spirit, the flesh will run rapid over us. When we, when I was out in the world, <laughs> there were things I don't think I wouldn't have done outside of drugs. I, I never believed in doing drugs, but I drank alcohol, I cussed, I fornicated. I fought, I did all kind of crazy stuff when I was out there in the world, right? And I did it proudly, feeling like, can't nobody stop me, do me what I want to do type of attitude that I carry with myself when I was out in the world. But when I became one of God's children, the first thing that happens is the devil starts to work on your mind and tell you, you don't know enough and now all of a sudden you become what shy you you don't want to get up and participate in anything because you don't want other folks looking at you and realizing that what i'm a sinner i'm a faker or i'm just too new to do anything because i don't know what i'm doing it's one of the three and i chose to say if i can be that way in the world I can be that way for God. And one of the things that I did back at, at, at Contra Costa College, we, I was working at the uh, tutoring center. I was a, a tutor in the tutoring center back then. And they had a party. Or I think it was a Christmas party or something along that line. And they got to playing Purple Rain. And we had a microphone. Yeah, you, you know where I'm going. They had a microphone there. And I'm telling you, I couldn't carry a note, not in no bucket or anything else. And I got up there, and I got to sing in Purple Rain. Next thing I know, I'm looking outside the tutoring center, and there's a whole crowd of folks wondering who in their right mind is up there screeching like that, singing this song. 
and I didn't care that they were looking at me, even though I was off key and everything. But when you come unto God, you don't want to get up and sing because I'm uh, off key. I can't sing. But I told myself, I said, no, God, I owe you a song. Because if I could do that in the world, I can do that for you. Mm -hmm. And it was one watch night service out here. I got up and I sung um, God Leads His Children by James Cleveland. Uh, yes, I went along with the music, the song, but I did get up and sing. And I have no shame uh, singing any song in front of anybody for God because God has truly changed my life. Yes, he has. He has changed my life for the better. And even though I may have committed a sin of omission because I refuse at a time in my life to stand up for what is right. Now, when I talk about standing up for what is right, it goes not just with how people view homosexuality in church, how people view uh, certain homeless folks or uh, I would call people that you, that you kind of frown upon coming into church. I'm talking about some of the same everyday folks that come to church. Some of the ones that come into church and they are backbiting. Some of the ones that come into church and you know that they are doing illegal stuff, but you don't say anything or you don't mention that they're wrong because you don't want to offend them or, or make cause a problem. But guess what you just did, though? So you just added that sin to your back. Now, when I repent, see, I don't want the stuff coming back on my back. See, I want God to just wipe it away, and I don't want it to come back. Because it burdened me down enough in my life that I had gotten tired. I wanted a change. And in wanting a change, I think about the songs we've heard this morning, is I know I've been changed by Carl Pearson, changed by Tremaine Hawkins, and he get another chance by John P. Key. All these sons are saying that I repented and how God found grace and gave me favor and he gave me mercy to say, hey, son, I am giving you another chance. Why? Because you repented. Now, when you think about the word repent, I went to the Greek and I got two, repent and repentance. And I'm going to try to say the word as it was pronounced in the Greek. And it's metano. That's uh, repentance. It's metano ah. I'm sorry. Metano ah. That's repentance. And it means to reverse. Reverse. Now think about driving your car. All of us know who know how to drive what reverse is. That means you're going to go back the other way that you just came from. Now, in reverse, sometimes, you know what, in reverse, you don't even turn around. I'm talking about the vehicle, but you do turn your head because you want to see where you're going, and you actually go back the way that you came. How many of us, when we say we are repentant of, want to be repentant of what we've been going through, actually look to reverse they path? How many of us have really said the things that have been bothering me and bringing me down, I am going to let God take off of my shoulders? See, if I was walking up a hill and I had a 50-pound pack on, now I may have been fine when I first started out walking, but I know as I started to start getting some, some of these secret things, that pack is starting to pull me back. Why? Because it's too heavy. And what you start to realize is you got to lighten the load. You got to start taking off some things that have been weighing you down so that you can continue on your climb up. Then there are some of us that I'm going to prove that I can get up here with this pack on. And I'm going to wear myself out. I'm going to wear myself down because I just want to prove that I can do this in spite of. Now, depending on high, how, how high of a mountain that you're looking to climb, that could be a death sentence. Because trying to climb a mountain as high as Mount Everest 
with some overloaded pack on your back, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. It's, it's, it's too much. And you will die on your way up there. That's not the goal. It's not that the goal is not to die before you get there. The goal is to make it there. Now, I know that we all become a little discouraged. Yes. And then what I mean by discouraged, I'm talking about discouraged in a natural, secular life and discouraged in a spiritual life. We become discouraged because one of the things we talked about, we, I use it now, give the, the tortoise and the hare. Because we see some folks who just seem like they're getting everything. It's coming quickly for them. And it seems to be working smoother for them. And they all of a sudden, you feel like, what am I doing wrong? Because God is not blessing me the same way that he seems to be blessing them. And as I told them this morning in, in, in our um, Sunday school Bible study session this morning, was I remember back in school, in junior high school especially, we used to run every Friday, well, every day we would run a quarter of a mile. Now, you could sprint, you can jog, but you had to run the quarter of a mile. And some young boys would take off and they'd be running real fast. Just run, got, got, got it going, right? But as the, as the run continued, I, I told you that, maybe that 20% between the run, all of a sudden you see them slowing down. <sighs> and next thing you know, they're back at the back. See, they started off fast but they didn't pace themselves enough to finish the race. So you don't let that bother you. you what you do is you establish a pace that's good enough for you, not a, a, a crawl pace, but a pace where you are moving forward, where you can sustain it. Now, I know when you come onto church, some churches want to try to rush you through stuff. No, you can't rush a person through spirituality because it has to, to really click inside of them. But what you do is you give them the tools to help them understand the spiritual nature of coming unto Christ. That's part of the repentance. See, this is not you changing to still be you. This is you changing to be who God is calling for you to be. Mm -hmm. Why else do we need to repent? Well, the one thing that's been sticking in my heart for the whole weekend, if, you know, matter of fact, I wanted to really start the service off with this, was saying we're sending out our prayers and condolences. I know people say it's sick and tired of hearing it, but our prayers and condolences to Florida for all the parents whose lives have been shattered by the loss of their children because of this uh, reckless uh, behavior of, of the young man. Um, but I want to really take it back some 50-something years ago when I was a young baby, baby. And the way that I saw my parents raise me and some of the children that was around us in our little life circle of growing up. And even though I wasn't raised in Christianity, we were still raised to believe in God. We were disciplined to understand authority. We understood structure. We had to accept no. See, it wasn't you through my back. I'm going to tell a story on myself. Uh, for my friends back in Richmond, California, y'all, in my generation, y'all should remember this place, 4th Street Market. In 4th Street Market, we, I would go, my mother would take my grandmother there, and I would go with her, and I would see this little Coke machine they had inside of 4th Street Market between the, the meat side, because they had one side with like a meat market and little vegetables, and then the grocery side with all like little box goods and canned goods and stuff along that line. <laughs> and I, I, they had a soda machine right in the middle, and I would see that soda machine, and I would cry for a soda. Excuse me. And I would cry for a soda, and my mother would say no, but my grandma would say yes. And so every time I saw the machine, I knew I knew how to get a soda. I would just cry and act a fool in front of my mama. And my mama would go with my grandmother there. Though. You got to remember my grandmother was there. My grandmama would sit there and have my mother get me the soda. Well, because I was young and didn't understand this whole thing, how I was truly working. So we, my mother took me to the store and my grandmother wasn't there. And I got in front of the machine and I started whining and crying. I, I still see myself on the floor crying. Yeah, I want the soda. 
And my mom was like, okay. My mom ain't here today. <laughs> and wore me out in the store. <laughs> well, now, I hear people cry, oh, oh, she abused you. No, she didn't. She didn't abuse me the least bit. Because what she did was she woke me up to reality is you can't get or have everything you want. Some things, sometimes you just have to live without it. We have gotten a generation of parents who don't want to discipline their children. They have bought into the study that if you whoop your child, you're going to teach your child how to hit. That's one of the studies I heard, that when you whoop your child, you teach your child how to hit. Okay, well, I know some children who haven't been whooped, and they still know how to hit. Yes. The stuff that these young people are doing today with this uh, shooting up the schools, planning to blow up the schools, killing themselves, we didn't have these issues growing up. We had guns back then. Parents probably didn't even lock them up nearly as much as they do supposedly be doing today. But kids didn't go to school and do the things like that. We got bullies. We had bullies back then. Now, again, you may not like it, <clears throat> but what we had to do was stand up for ourselves. If you told your parent that someone was bullying you and you did nothing about it, when you got home, you had to deal with your parent. Now, I don't know about you, but I know I didn't want to deal with mine at all. Not like that, I should say. So we have let down a generation because we have bought in to what I'm going to say the world, and we know if you're friends with the world, you are what? An enemy of God has told us, and that is don't whoop your children. Mm -hmm. Your children need to be disciplined. Some All children don't need to be whooped. Trust me, we know that from experience. We have one. They don't, they, you know, they, they, did, they did well. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but, uh, but all children don't need to be whooped. But those that need to be disciplined structurally need to be. Now, I ain't talking about they go butt wild and crazy. No, but they need to understand some things in life. One, it's not right to take something that don't belong to you. And that's when you go to school and you shoot someone, you have taken their life. That didn't belong to you. You are lost now forever. We don't want the generation to continue. That's a repentant thing. We need to repent to God for us lacking, slacking on our responsibility. Because the Bible told us to do what in Proverbs 22 and 6? It has to train up a child yes. in the way that they should go. Yes. And, they, and then when they grow up, they will not depart. Think about how you are. I'm talking about the ones that's closer to my age. Think about how your parents raised you and how you are today. Even the ones who decided they didn't want to whoop their child. Just think about how you are and look at how your child is. And if your child act worse than you, look at what's missing and how you rear. I didn't want to whoop my child. I didn't like the way my parents did me like that. I didn't want, I gave my child everything I didn't have. Okay, well, there's a reason why you didn't get everything you didn't have. Because you didn't need it. But when we get to a point in our life when we are afraid to send our children to school because there is no telling if they're going to make it back home, that's a sad state of the world or a society that we're living in. And we have created this. Yes, we have. We have created this. So that's a cause for us to repent. When we sit up there and think about how a person could go without. Now, I don't know about anybody else's household. I'm going to speak about mine right now. And that is we had to repent for wasting food. And what I mean is we can go buy food and buy some more food. I'm going to uncook food and more food and whatever. And the next thing we know, we got food in there that's wasted because we never got to it. It's freezer burned and whatever else came to be, and we have to throw it away. You know that's a sin? Because we're not being good stewards of what the Lord has given us. But yet we are wasting food all the time. 
People are out there hungry, but we don't want to help them out. But we're wasting food in our house. Well, okay, that's a cause for repentance. Mm -hmm. We need to ask God to forgive us for the fact that we are not being one a good steward. Two, we're not even caring enough about our brethren. Yes. I'm going to continue with this. Another one is church. Now, like I said, I don't even want to call it church. Where you go to service at? Where you go to call yourself worshiping and praising God? That's, that's the place I'm talking about. Wherever you go, how do you act? Are you really looking to praise and worship God? Or are you in there to show someone what you feel <coughs> set you apart as a blessing? Because you got the latest and greatest this and the latest and greatest that while somebody's in there struggling just to pay a bill yeah. when you don't even need it. Because if you can't pay attention to what the world is doing to us, advertise. Advertisement comes on every day. I can't even count how many times it comes on whatever you're looking at. Whether you're listening to Pandora with the free radio, whether you're looking at TV, whether you're listening to the radio, whether you're watching videos on the, um, the, the, the streaming stuff, most videos come with some kind of commercial, even streaming-wise. Advertising to get you to do what? Spend your money. Mm -hmm. You go out and you buy the latest phone iPhones, Android phone, your mama phone, I don't give a who with phone, yeah, I said that. <laughs> you go out and you buy a phone. And just before you can even get that last contact name and number in, a commercial pops up on TV talking about the next phone that they're coming out with and you think you gotta have it. Now, I understand this new generation and the fact that technology is, is just in gross STEM and they love the text and all that other good stuff. But what, what what was the purpose of a telephone? To make, make a phone call. call. Make a call. You would pick up the phone and you would call whoever and talk to them, whatever, and then get off and call somebody else. Then all of a sudden they allow you to send them text message. Now, I'm one. I didn't. I, I never really too much care for text messages. Even today, I don't too much care for text messages. I'm 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 starting to accept it a little bit more. But I always felt like when you texting people, it's because you. You can't say whatever you're trying to say in front of somebody else. That's just the way I felt about it. But I understand now sometimes you can't talk to people and you may have some things that need to be said. We, you know, case in point, my own wife, we had, uh, we needed to say some things or we needed some things, whatever, to know about something, we had to text her. So she could do that, but she can't talk on the phone. So like I said, I, I'm, I'm grasping that. Mm -hmm. But we have gotten to the point with this texting thing, most folks can't even drive their car without the phone in their hand. Don't pick it up, my. Well. Sit up here. Eh, oh, man. I don't understand it. It's never that important that you have to text and drive. And I pray, because I'm not in the car with my children, that none of my children do that, text and drive. Because daddy would be highly upset if y'all do. But it's the concept when you think about it, it's like drinking and driving to me. When you drink and you become inebriated drunk, you are taking not only your life in your hands, but the lives of everybody else that's on the road with you. And you don't care. When you text and drive, you do the same thing. You don't care about the folks that's around you. Don't you know if you're not caring about your neighbor, that's a sin? What did the Bible say? Love thy neighbor. Hello? Yes, I went there, but we don't care. That's why I'm talking, this is why I'm talking about repentance. Why we need to repent to God. Because we are doing so many things that are so far away from what God has called us to do, but yet we can show up here today and be all happy because we don't went to church or service uh, and then go back and call ourselves Christians, but we're not practicing. Not one inch of it. Mm -hmm. We want everything to come our way, but we're not willing to give anything back. And then you wonder why you are not being blessed. Because God is not going to bless you in a selfish 
state. A selfish state is a state when all you care about is yourself. Now, some of the analogies I just spit out here earlier, just a second ago, shows that we are in a selfish state. Because if I had given some of the food or the money that I wasted on food to someone else that needed it, I would be showing love. If I care enough not to pick up my phone and text and drive because I could hurt or kill somebody else, I am showing love. The fact that I don't do it means that I'm not showing love and I'm violating one of God's biggest commands. Well, then we go to not wanting to understand the truth or rather get a better understanding of God's word. I am truly honored that people feel that we know enough about God's word to help them change the way that they live. I'm also upset that you won't take the time to learn more about God's word to help yourself. Why? Because I won't be there Pastor A won't be there when it's time to meet the Lord in heaven. You are going to be there. And what you have done for God will speak volumes about you. Go to 1 John, the second chapter. I'm going to read 1 through 6. 1 John, or if you got it, you can do that for me too. Gotcha. First John, John, second chapter, verses one through six. Yes, I'm in the ESV translation. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the appropriation of our for our sins, and not for our sins only, but also the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Mm. Whosoever say, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, I hope you're reading with me, says is a liar. Mm -mm. And we know the Bible says a liar will not what? Carry in God's sight. That means you won't even get a chance to see the Lord. You're just going straight through. And the truth is not in him. But whosoever keeps his word in him truly loves, the truly the love of God is perfected by the by this we may know that we are in him. We are in him. Yes, amen. So again, all you folks that go up to church every Saturdays, Sundays, whatever day you go worship. And you are not keeping the commandments of God. What did it call you? A liar. Mm. And we know that a liar is what? A sin. Lying is a sin. And you need to do what now? You need to repent. repent. See, I'm letting everyone know I don't think there's nothing that is going to be covered that we don't fall in. We all fall in. If you want me to talk about cheating on your taxes, cheating on anything, cheating on your spouse, okay, you need to repent. Because you sin. If you sit there and wish somebody some ill will, you need to repent because you sin. Now, I, I know a group of folks that sit there and say that, uh, well, my sin is not as bad as the other sin. I don't, I don't know where you get that one from. Because <laughs> sin is sin. <laughs> sin is sin. You know, how people could. Jump on homosexuals. And the reason why, because they, they're the ones who get beat up the most to me in church is homosexual, homosexuals. And they would jump down a homosexual's throat because the Bible says it's an abomination. But the Bible also said lying is an abomination. False teaching is an abomination. But they don't jump on those. Okay. But all sin or no sin is ever going to be allowed up in heaven. Right. Okay. So if just because you may not be on that boat, if you're still on the boat of sin, you still go into the same place. James, the second chapter, verse number 10. 
For whosoever keeps the whole law, now remember this, and it was 600 something different laws, so whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of it all. Did you hear that? The Bible says if you break one of the so many 600 some laws that they had, you have broken them all. Case in point, I'm going to tell you how I feel like I'm a law-abiding citizen, but I'm a lawbreaker also. Because this is one of the laws I think majority of us break, and that's that speed limit law. Speed limit says 25 miles an hour, Robert's driving 30. Speed limit says 30 miles an hour, Robert's driving 35. Speed limit says 35, so y'all should get where I'm going, Robert's driving 40. That's the way I drive. Okay? Now, when the speed limit says 80, no, I'm not doing 85. I think 80 is good enough. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, as harmless as that may seem, if we were to be held by the same standard of God, I am a law breaker. I am not law abiding. Mm -hmm. Because I have broken one law, which means I have broken them all. And mine is just five miles over the speed limit. Now, the police don't pull me over. I've ran across numerous cops driving five miles an hour, and they don't pull me over. Okay, but I'm not telling y'all to do it because if y'all get a ticket, I'll oh, better run. No, no. <laughs> I'm just saying, well, God, that's me. I don't get no tickets. But, no, I'm saying that the, the truth of the matter is you've got to reexamine yourself. And I'm getting ready to wrap up because I'm, I'm going to close out what I came up here to talk about, and I'm wrapping up. But, um you got to re-examine yourself, people. We, have, we Can't you see the state of this world? The United States have truly, truly degenerated. we got so many folks claiming to be Christian, and I'm not talking about folks who, who are down trying to really understand the truth about God. I'm talking about the ones who just like the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the ones that's more political in nature, and they're trying to fight and hold on to a political power and position, and they call themselves being Christians, but they hate other people. What part of Christianity is that? No. What part of Christianity tells you to hate anyone? I don't care how they got here. What part of Christianity has told you to dislike a person because of the color of their skin? It has been nowhere in the Bible have I saw that. But yet, we look at them like they run all Christianity, and they don't. They don't. They don't. Because they don't control anything around me or this ministry here. And I don't care if they blast us and they send hate mail, but we will stand on the truth of the Bible no matter what anyone else says or feels. This world has became just a cesspool of sin. Well, and you know what? And we just keep moving on like it doesn't even bother us. Sin of omission. That's why we need to repent. Because well, we got to stand up. We got to stop letting kids get guns. And people keep acting like it's the gun that's killing the kids. It's the person behind the gun that's killing the kids. And if the kid had some kind of Christ sent them some kind of Holy Spirit for all you folks fighting against Jesus. And Jesus stands for love. And you fighting against it? But yet we got this turmoil society out here and you thinking that's the way we should be. It's not the way we need to be. Why do you hate love but you want madness and chaos everywhere? Well, Jesus stands for love. Help us, Lord. Help us. Love. And if you're not practicing love, then you're not following Jesus. Well. So for those that sit there and don't want to believe in Christ, we know which side of the street you stand on because Christ is about love. And if you had love, you can't go to the school and shoot the school up. You can't go around running folks over. You can't go around drinking till you're so drunk that you want to run people over or texting on your phone until you're just killing everybody in sight. That's not a part of being a Christian. Well. But you say, Pastor Rob, you've been talking about repenting and repentance. How do we 
we change things here in America? How do we get things to, to be different? How do we go back to God? One of the things I always think about is humbling yourself. And um, when I think about humbling, you read in the Old Testament, when they repented to God, what did they do? It, it, it says clear as day that they they put on sackcloth. Now, you know what a sackcloth is. You see them big old 25, 50 pound bags, and they made them that old whatever they want to call it, material <laughs> that hold the potatoes and or right. onions or whatever stuff in it. They put that on. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not they fancy threads. They don't feel like they're worthy enough for any of that. They humbled themselves and they sat on ashes. Stuff that they burnt up. They set their behind up on that and they repented and told God how sorry they were because they sit there and violated his commandments. Well, we can't do that. Why? Because I got some designer this and designer that on, and I don't want my designer nothing. And I can't look ugly. I don't want my hair on there. I don't want this going on for me at church. Then you're not humbling yourself. Because you should care less about how you look. What you should be caring about is what really goes on in the inside. And then the Bible says in 2 Chronicles, the seventh chapter, in the 14th verse, it says that. This is the one about if the people that are his children is called by his name. Yes. Um, Second Chronicles. Seven and fourteen. Seven and fourteen. Thank you. Y'all don't understand this. It says, "If my people, if, if, if my people." Who are called by my name. Whose name? God. Jehovah, Yahweh, Jesus. If my people, Yeshua, mm -hmm. who are called by my name, what's the first thing it says they have to do? Humble. It says humble themselves. You know when you know you humble, you will have church anywhere. That's a blessing. You will have church in the tent. Blessing. You will have church at the park. You will have church have service. At a, uh, at a lake, you have service in the house, you have service in the car, Bless you have service at the school, Bless you have service in the library, you have service wherever it the spirit leads you to have service. That's when you know you're humble. Bless you. Because you will have service where service needs to be held. Humble themselves and then what? Pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. Now remember I told you Turning is a repent. And you're seeking who? You're not looking for anybody. You're not looking for some mega pastor who got a billion members. No, you're looking for one person who's not even here in the flesh. You're well, seeking God. That's who you're seeking. Christ. Mm -hmm. So you're going to turn from the ways that you've been doing things. And you're going to seek his face. From their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven yes. and will forgive their sins mm -hmm. and heal their land. Okay? But as long bless, as bless, we refuse bless. to do any of that, it will continue and continue bless to get bless. worse. Now, I know the Bible talked to it in the old days. I mean, in, in, the old, in the end times, it's going to get worse. Yes. But not for his children. See, you don't want to be found outside of God's covenant. You don't want to be found outside of his loving arms. You don't want to be bless outside. Bless him, bless him, you bless want him. to be on the inside. Stop letting prosperity gospel make you think that all this is about is gaining material possessions. Because yes. it's a lot more than that. Yes. yes. It's a lot more than some fancy car and some nice home and all these other things. Well, why do we have to be poor? You don't have to be poor. Bless him, bless him. You choose to be poor by your mindset. But you know what? Everybody can't be rich. Now, one more part. It says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers that is made in this place. Now, this is, they were building the temple and this is what Solomon was going through, but this is also applying to us. Us. Now, we're not trying to get on one accord. We're too busy fighting with other churches and denominations and, and all this other foolishness. Okay, but what's important 
is who we serve. Yes, yes. See, I don't serve a pastor. I serve God. Yes. Okay, and that was the way it was a long time ago. That's who I serve. And if you're serving the pastor, then you are lost. Because we're not serving the pastor. We're serving God. And the pastor better be serving well, God. That's yeah. when we're supposed to be following him as he followed Christ. Well. If he's not following Christ, you need to run. Follow him. You need to run. Oh, but I like the music. I like the way they get up and, and preach and, and make me sound. They get me all emotional and caught up. Emotional and caught up ain't going to get you sent to heaven. <laughs> it's how you living for God. Are they being an example? And they need to repent. <laughs> I'm talking about just drinking wild and crazy. <laughs> I'm talking about if they can't help you find God, they need to repent. Yes, it is. But saying God has called them. Because I'm more than certain if God called them, that He would help them help you. He would help him help you find him. <laughs> and my last scripture, and I'm calling Pastor A. Yeah, you should know you were coming. To close us out. <laughs> to close us out. <laughs> hey. My last one is Acts 2 and 38. Come on, y'all. Got to have it. Got to have it. Because we, what was happening was Peter would preach the sermon at Pentecost. They were making fun of him, talking about how they were drunk and um, full of this new wine mm -hmm. because they were out speaking in a language. Well, a language you want to call it tongues, that's fine. A language that was the ones of the person, the other person, they were speaking in different languages, like us learning foreign languages. When you learn Spanish and French and German and Chinese and no English, you know, five different languages, where well, you're speaking in a language that they can understand. Mm -hmm. And it says, and Peter said to them, because they asked the question when they heard Peter preach this sermon, mm -hmm. what can we do? Because we feel pricked in our hearts. We know the stuff that we've been doing has been wrong. And so I want to know what can I do to change this raggedy path that I'm traveling on. And Peter says, repent and be baptized. How many? Every one of you. Everybody here needs to repent and be baptized in the name of who? Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of your sins, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, now, if you want to fight on that, you go ahead, fight. If you don't have the Holy Ghost and you're fighting on it, then you should understand what part are you lacking. Because if you didn't want to be baptized in his name, and you don't get the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. if you got the Holy Ghost, bless him, bless him, bless hey, I don't care. All bless I care him, is that you him. get it and that you're saved. Yes. And you got to repent to start the process. Yeah. Now, if you want to keep on walking and going down these old raggedy paths and you want to keep on getting on Facebook and everything else when the next school shooting come up because we refuse to obey yes. what the Lord has told us to do with training up our children and how we send them out in the world and how we're acting as grown-ups and people, how we turned our backs on him, but we want some miracle to change this world. No, let's go back to how it needs to be. Yeah. We need to go back to love to the Lord. I'm back. We I'm back. need to repent. And that's it. Pastor A. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Pastor Bob will start out this morning. Amen. Talking about repentance. Amen. I did not much see it. Not much, many times that I really don't have much to say because he covered it. Amen. With the word of God, I was going to uh, certainly hit Second Chronicles, uh, uh, Second Chronicles, what is it, seven to fourteen? Amen. But he 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 covered it, so I just thank God. All we all we have to do is once we hear the word of God, obey it. It's not enough for us to in, uh, to, to to ingest it. That just means it's going in, but we have to digest food and nutrients won't do us any good if they, they come into our bodies and just sit. No, what do they have to do? They have to break down, get into our systems, get into our veins, get into our vessels, get in every part of us in order for it to be what? Effective, huh? 
It's got to be activated. So let the word that has gone out today, let it activate within your members. Let it activate within your spirit. Let it activate your mindset to do what God has called you to do. And if you know that you're outside of the will, if you know that you have not lived according to the word of God, do exactly as he said today, as the word of God has said. Simply say, Lord, please forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. I know I've done wrong. Just forgive me. And, can't forget, and don't re-offend in that same point. Once you've asked God to give you a clean sight, then walk in the newness of life. He said, repent. And you're sorry now. And be baptized. You got to be clean. Yes, God has forgiven you, but you got to go down and get all those filthiness, all that simple ways. You got to get it buried. You got to have it go down in the water. So God can raise you up. When he said he'll raise you up, up in the newness of life. All that bad works, everything, that disobedience, that anger, that hatred that's going on right now, it's going to die right in the water. And you're going to rise in the newness of life. All right, we thank God for you. We thank you for your support. We thank God uh, here and uh, via social media. We thank you for those that consistently uh, view us and support us and share the message. It's not enough for us just to get, enjoy it and be strengthened, but we want others to be drawn into the kingdom. So please press that share button, and when you join in, uh, 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 share it uh, and, and uh, what is it? Invite your friends as you're listening, so they too can be blessed by the word of God. They can be strengthened by the word of God. We're into making disciples. It's not enough for people to just come to sit in a building, in an edifice, and no one else can, can hear the word of God. The Bible comm could, he commands us to be disciple builders. That means that we can't all sit in a building. That means that we need to go out and spread the word of God. Some of us can't go outside the confines of our cities and states. But if you share that message, if you share the word of God, you're spreading it to Amen. someone in Africa. You're spreading it to yep. someone in Texas. You're spreading it to someone in London, huh? Yes, Via Amen. social media. That's the point of it. We can't all go out and, 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 and be disciples like that, but we can share the word of God. Amen. How, how else is, gonna, is it going to reach every place? The Bible said before this is time ends. It's got to hit every ear, has to hear the word of God. We know that we're not going to go to every continent, but when we know social media can reach it, huh? Amen. By you pressing that share button, you can help that last person. Huh? Find salvation. It's that critical. So press that share button for the word of God, and we thank you again for all those who consistently support and those that are going to. Amen. We thank you, Brother Randy, for joining in and those that we invited. Uh, well, who was the other I saw this morning? Brother uh, brother Lawrence, we thank you for uh, tuning in and all the other regulars. Amen. Sister Angela, Sister Gayla. We hate to, as I said, start calling names, but we, we're doing this because we want you to know that we love you and we ap appreciate your support. You can be laying in the bed this morning. We know it's the, the, the time difference is three hours. So we appreciate you taking out the time to acknowledge the word of God, to acknowledge our ministry, and to support us. We thank you, and we love you, and we support you as well. So we ask you to continue to support us. Look us up on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. Instagram. Uh, Instagram. Uh, I think that's it. YouTube. YouTube. Let them know that we're out here because we intend to promote the gospel. We're not, as we always say, and we'll continue to say, it's not about us. We're not interested in, in fame and fortune. We're interested in further the kingdom. So we ask you to continue to support and share, share, share. All right, stay prayerful this week. Stay fasted up this week. Give God some time. Ingest his word. Digest his word so you can be strengthened. We love you, and we will be continuing our relationship series. Uh, most likely, we're going to resume on next Wednesday. We'll keep you updated. 
attentively next Wednesday. Not this Wednesday, but the next Wednesday. Not this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, we will resume if God provide our relationship training. We will be wrapping up dating. Uh, the dating uh, aspect of it and going on to marriage because you're not dating just today. You, if you hold, you have intention in, in, in solidifying it uh, for marriage as the Bible intended. All right. We love you. God bless.